Hello, I'm Renee Bangelsdorf, Chair of the Event Committee, CEO of Charlie Bravo Aviation, and your 2020 General Aviation Leadership Forum host. After finishing up our first session from the inspiring British aviator, Tracy Curtis Taylor, we now switch gears looking to the future. Grazia Fittadini is the CTO of Airbus. Born in Italy and raised in the US, Grazia leads Airbus' ambition to build the future of flight. She began her career as part of the Eurofighter Consortium before joining Airbus in Germany in 2002, where she has contributed to the A380, A350, A320, and A400M programs as she moved into more senior management positions including technical authority for all Airbus aircraft. Grazi was executive vice president and head of engineering of Airbus Defense and Space before becoming chief technical officer in May of 2018. As such, Grazia is the first woman to be appointed as a member of the Airbus Executive Committee. Today, she leads a transnational team that spans the globe with facilities in Europe, China, and the Americas that is leading the transformation to sustainable, electric, autonomous, and zero emission air transportation. Grazia, we are honored that you are taking time from your very busy schedule to paint a picture of how exciting the future of aviation is. Thank you, Renee, for the warm welcome and kind introduction. And good morning, Iowa, or well, good afternoon, if you're joining here from Europe, um, like me, from the Airbus German headquarters in Munich. I'm delighted to have the chance to be among all of you, women of achievement, members and supporters of the Iowa community. At Airbus, we're so proud to have been an Iowa main sponsor for the last five years. And as in past events, I had expected I would join you all physically today, as I did last year when I stood among you in Paris. But a lot has changed in the past few months, hasn't it? Instead of meeting in person, coming together in one room, we find ourselves sitting either physically distanced from one another or in our own homes scattered across the globe. Indeed, our reality has been literally turned on its head. And in the past few months, we have probably been challenging our own need for certainty as we adapt to this warped new normality. We uh, also may be questioning, and a lot more critically than ever before, our need for certainty that our health and our safety and that of our friends and loved ones is not compromised when we leave the house or say when we'll be ready to board a plane again. In the past months, I'm sure we've all been focused on supporting our entire aviation ecosystem to ensure our industry has what it needs to stay afloat. So this brings us to one evident question. What does the future hold for our aerospace industry? Now, my answer to this is one of the few things that I really feel certain about, despite these uncertain times. Before the pandemic, I imagine the future of aviation to be climate neutral, a world in which Greta Thunberg will fly, a world brimming with ingenuity, a world whose skies welcome autonomous, silent aircraft made out of smart, advanced materials, a world embracing inclusion, a world in which our industry's leading companies would have a gender balanced board, for instance, representing all corners of the world. In my mind, this picture still remains as sharp and relevant as ever. And if you allow me to, I'll take the next 20 minutes or so to paint this picture a bit more vividly. I'd also like to address the new priorities we at Airbus are seeing as a result of the current crisis and how we are learning from them. And I will finish with reiterating the importance of leaning on each other as members of a tightly knit community and industry to make it through. 
So let's get straight into the first layer of our picture. And let's start with a question we're hearing now more than ever. Is the aerospace industry still committed to climate action in a post-pandemic era? Now let's face it, when people ask this question, they actually think, will the aviation industry still be committed to climate action or will the focus be on recovering profits? Now, there's much legitimacy to assume that during a crisis such as this, the immediate needs, health and safety of people and resuscitating the economy will of course be taken care of first. But we need to be very clear here, uh, dear colleagues, dear friends, in the long term, this is a false choice. Simply because there is no industry profit without climate protection. Preserving our planet is not a nice add-on cherry on the cake that we may choose if we can afford or not. This is the prerequisite for building the future of aviation ecologically and economically. And this is already common sense across many sectors. You know, for quite a while, analytic thinkers like Jeremy Rifkin point at global public pension funds massively divesting from fossil fuel-based industries. Last year, European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen declared a climate emergency and outlined very ambitious plans for a European Green Deal. And this very year, Larry Fink surprised Wall Street by announcing plans to make sustainability his new global investment standard. And you know, when I attended the World Economic Forum back in January, the climate protection movement literally dominated the agenda. Now, the coronavirus crisis has undoubtedly increased this global awareness of how dependent we are on a healthy environment. And this is also why here in Europe, government introduced economic stimulus plans are coming with a lot of green strings attached. In this regard, it's especially interesting for us to see politics, certainly under societal pressure, seizing this unique opportunity to increase demand for and support of sustainable technologies in aerospace. We already see very strong first signs of that, for instance, in France. And, and let's be certain, pressure for green solutions will further rise when we get out of this crisis once for all. So as far as our inventiveness goes in a pre-pandemic world, we must take it further. The aviation industry has already made tremendous progress in reducing its environmental impact. You might be familiar with how in the last 60 years, uh, we have cut fuel burn and CO2 emissions by more than 80% per seat kilometer. NOx, NOx, nitrogen oxides emissions are down by 90%. Noise emissions by 75%. But as Greta would rightfully tell us, this is not enough. As aerospace professionals, we all know there is no solution to this question. Or more precisely, there is not one single solution to this question. Aircraft are among the most amazing and most complex products in the world. This is why we need to pull many levers to decarbonize aviation and to fly climate neutral by 2050. We need to push aerodynamic structures and smart advanced materials. We need to push for alternative fuels, alternative propulsion using hydrogen in the equation or hybrid electric configurations. We need to push for automated air traffic management, explore new fields like artificial intelligence and quantum computing as fundamental enablers for the achievement of this very ambitious target. And at the same time, as we're applying our know-how, cutting edge technology for the benefit of the planet, we need to further optimize it for the health and safety of its nearly 8 billion people on board. And we, as aerospace experts, know that we are a part of a grand ecosystem, which took great care over the last 50 plus years to build what is today proven to be the safest way to travel. But we must make it more clear how 
How do we look after the well-being of individuals? How do we appeal to human emotion? And for us at Airbus, as manufacturers, that means keeping trust and confidence in our industry, in our technology, for anyone and anything that flies aboard one of our aircraft. We're taking this responsibility very seriously. And today, we're confident enough to state that the air in an aircraft is as clean and safe as it is in a medical operating room. This is due in part to the HEPA filters exchanging cabin air every two to three minutes, clearing out more than 99.9% .9 of virus and bacteria. But as far as our inventiveness goes, we must further explore the crossroads between health and new technologies to build the future of aviation. At Airbus, for example, we're working on using synthetic spider silk for antibacterial flight seats. We're working on far UVC lights to disinfect the cabin and even on self-disinfecting coatings, surfaces, which could be deployed in laboratories, for instance, hat on hat racks, luggage racks, but the future of aviation will only start at the point where all these individual innovations converge into one single safe and clean solution. Now, imagine how much more powerful we could be in this effort if we took better care to harness all the talent of truly everyone. It is no secret that the aerospace sector isn't exactly diverse when it comes to gender. It's a systemic issue in all engineering-based companies and it will be a long-term effort, but we need to catalyze change in this sense. Like us at Airbus, Iowa shares the same ambition of supporting the advancement of women and of furthering diversity and inclusion in aviation and aerospace. Now, our joint mission is as critical now as ever before. You know, when I was a kid, I had a big dream. I wanted to be a pilot in the Italian Air Force. But when I applied, um, guess what? I was rejected on the grounds that I'm a woman. Now this, at that time, it wasn't possible for women to fly. Now, things have changed luckily. But the fact is this rejection prompted me to, to get decisive. So I, I started studying aeronautical science. And from my first salary as an airspace engineer, I paid for my own pilot's license. Now, in the years uh, to come, I endured a few other instances in which I was, you know, made to feel marginalized, as I'm sure many of you have too. You know, my very first job, for example, I was the only female engineer on site. And as such, I, um, I could not enter the shop floor because I would distract um, the, co the colleagues, the blue collar colleagues working on the shop floor. Now, I'd like to think that we've come a long way from the days in which individuals were treated differently based on their gender, on their ethnicity, education, social background. But when I look at the discrimination and intolerance affecting many individuals today, I'm absolutely, I'm horrified and I'm convinced there still is a tremendous amount of work to be done. However, seeing the potential of the power of the collective, like the Iowa community, I remain optimistic. We can get more women and minorities into STEM because if we don't, dear colleagues and friends, we're missing out on the talent of more than half the population. Today, when I see communities and nations across the globe unite to fight injustice through the Black Lives Matter movement or honoring the movement for equality represented by LGBTQ Pride Month, I'm convinced more than ever in the power of the collective. Indeed, it's not a time to be silent. And by demonstrating solidarity and coming together as a community, a society which encourages absolutely everyone to express their unique voices and draw from each other's rich experiences. This is something very much in our reach. Looking at the uncertainty and complexity of our world today, let's remember 
Let's remember there are also many reasons to be hopeful for the future. We have an exciting journey ahead. Please, let's not forget we have only one planet. There's no planet B. So let's work together to protect it from degradation. Let's not forget to harness our collective ingenuity and innovation to progress our industry, to bring our beautiful aerospace industry forward. Let's not stay silent and let's do what we can to improve the human condition. We have a new generation expecting us to deliver them a world that is brimming with technological and societal breakthroughs. So let's not only keep our promise to them, but on top, let's deliver them a world which is better than today's. Thank you, Iowa, for having me today. And until next time. Thank you, Grazia, for an enlightening and forward-thinking presentation. We are so grateful for your contribution to technology and aerospace. Hey, if you have a friend or colleague who might enjoy today's presentations, it's not too late to register. Tweet, text, or send a smoke signal to get them to join us at iowagaforum.com. Additionally, we have gathered together the Women in Aviation Advisory Board that Secretary Chow mentioned in her opening remarks so they can share with you more about their roles. You can learn more by clicking either the left or right screen in the main lobby. Our next keynote session will begin at 11 a.m. Eastern with Deidre Romero, Double Win Ambassador and Client Care Manager at Michael Hyatt and Company. Join us to hear her presentation dispelling the myth that you cannot achieve a successful work-life balance.